Newspapers around the globe dedicate their front pages to Michael Jackson. Since his death on June 25th, until his memorial service 12 days later and even beyond, the pop star's demise generated wall-to-wall -wall coverage on networks across the planet. British 24-hour news channels Sky News and the BBC had extensive reports, as did those of other countries, BFM in France, CNN Plus in Spain, to Turkey and elsewhere. Millions of people around the world tuned in to watch the Jackson Memorial Service. It was the impact of the internet and social networking that stood out. Sites reported a major spike in video streaming during Jackson's memorial. The ten most popular topics on Twitter that afternoon were all connected to the memorial. News of Michael Jackson's death broke initially on the website TMZ. Correspondents from around the globe then descended on California. Since he died, we have been making lives on every, every newscast. We never stop. It's been pretty much 24-7. If, if, if I haven't been actually really on the job, I've been on the job through Twitter or people you know, twittering me, tweeting me. It's been non-stop since June 25th. As you can tell, with the helicopters above, it never ends. <laughs> A poll by the Pew Research Center found nearly two in three Americans thought the media went over the top with its coverage of Michael Jackson's death. Out of a 1,000 adults surveyed, 64% said there was too much airtime and column inches dedicated to the story, though half agreed the media struck the right balance between his music and private life. The amount of attention dedicated to the latter prompted harsh words from a friend of the Jackson family, Reverend Al Sharpton. I have seen other musical icons die where there were serious questions about them, and I've never seen it dominate the news before their funeral and dominated to the point that people forgot their greatness. Michael Jackson, a pop star who faced so much media scrutiny throughout his life, also in the public glare in his death. Let's assess the media's coverage of Michael Jackson's death. So for that, we turn to entertainment writer with the Los Angeles Times, Jeff Boucher. Jeff, a huge story for the LA Times. Is it possible that there was too much coverage? Well, I think it's a very uh, reasonable question. I think that uh, we uh, tend to jump on something like this and, and report it in every which way we can. And I think that uh, certainly there is a danger of fatigue or saturation. So given that, of course, it's a huge story for the LA Times, is it possible that there's too much coverage and it's difficult uh, for editors, journalists to walk that fine line? Uh, certainly from the eye of the storm, uh, it's easy to lose a uh, uh, sense of how much is too much. But uh, our readers are there, clearly, and they let us know what they think. Uh, we had a recent issue uh, with a commemorative poll out on Michael Jackson, and I got quite a few emails from people who said, enough is enough. But that same day's paper was, uh, it was less than 10% of the paper. I mean, it's probably 5% of the paper. The rest of the paper dedicated to our usual report on international news, local politics, features, sports, everything else. It's all still there. Uh, but certainly there's this dedication to this story at this time, but you can feel it starting to wind down. I mean, uh, at the time in question of his death, um, the LA Times was very quick to uh, be among the first to say that he had died, Michael Just Jackson had passed away, but you, you were up against some stiff competition, I'm thinking of particularly the website TMZ. Um, how does that uh, traditional media versus the online media compete, and is there, is there a clear winner, or which direction do you see it all going? It is interesting, isn't it, to, to watch that division. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, we, the only way we can approach it is to do what we do. Uh, when we have the story and we know it's right, uh, we move forward. Uh, being first is important. Being first and being wrong uh, doesn't really count. So uh, we go by our own measure. When we felt that our sources uh, had given us enough information to go on, uh, we went forward with the story. And you're right, I think we were first. Uh, and certainly, you know, that day we had 12 million hits on our website, which begs the question of what new media is. I mean, we, we, do, we are new media as well. In a wider editorial sense, I mean, could you sense at the moment when you knew he had passed away that uh, the story was going to take on all the manifestations and go in all the directions that it appeared to go, the will, his former wife, uh, etc.? Absolutely. I mean, you could see all the different storylines that would need to be pursued. And, and for us here at the Los Angeles Times, I mean, uh, you can't forget this is a man's death. Uh, and this is a, a man that people watched their entire lives uh, for a certain generation. They grew up with him. They have a lot of strong feelings about him. Um, I would never frame it as a, as a, a story that 
should be defined by our experience, but I think this is going to be looked on as a turning point for our paper and, and moving forward with our dual missions of being an internet and a print publication. Jeff Boucher in LA, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you. And don't forget to drop by our little spot in cyberspace at cnn.com slash correspondence. You can see any part of the show again. Check out the archive and take part in the quick vote. Our address again, cnn.com slash correspondence. And that's all for this edition of the programme. I'm Fanula Sweeney. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next time.